welcome to Edinburgh, the capital of Scotland. Scotland is famous for its beautiful highlands, haggis and the tartan kilt. While we're here, we're going to show you the best bits of Edinburgh and also dip into the Scottish culture too. The centre of Edinburgh is separated into two main sections. The first is the new town with its Georgian architecture and well-known shopping streets Prince's Street and George Street. And the other, the old town. The old town is where the majority of Edinburgh's residents used to live prior to the 18th century in cramped, overcrowded conditions. When the population of Edinburgh began to grow, the old town became home to some of the world's earliest high-rise residential buildings on the main street known as the Royal Mile. The Royal Mile is almost exactly a mile long and runs upwards from Holyrood Palace to the foot of Edinburgh Castle. During this entire distance, at no part is the street officially called the Royal Mile, and it is actually made up of five smaller streets. The High Street is the main section of the Royal Mile where you can find the majority of touristic locations, restaurants and shops on a largely pedestrianised zone. It hosts popular spots like the stunning St Giles Cathedral and the underground caverns of Mary King's Close. It also becomes a central hub in August when the Edinburgh Fringe Festival comes to town. The Fringe Festival is the largest arts festival in the world and for one month every year, bars, clubs and seemingly unused spots all over the city are converted into makeshift venues for performers of all categories. You will find comedy shows, spoken word recitals, theatre, exhibitions, music performances and other forms of art in this unique but brilliant platform to express talent. There is even a programme specific to free shows. The Fringe isn't the only thing that brings lots of people to Scotland, and another of them is whisky. Whisky is Scotland's national drink, and has a different taste all over the country depending on where it's from. It's not only popular within the country, but worldwide also, with amazingly over a billion bottles exported last year alone. One of the main types of whisky in Scotland is single malt whisky. The name means that it has been produced from one distillery only. So, there's five stages to making whisky. There's malting, where we start to break down starches in the barley grain. Mashing, where we convert those starches into sugar and dissolve it into water. We call this water wort, and we take it through to our third stage, which is fermentation. It's where we'll start to make our alcohol. And our fourth stage, distillation, we'll concentrate that alcohol into a spirit. And then we'll take that spirit to maturation, where we'll put it in barrels and age it into whiskey. The whiskey is transferred to hundreds of barrels and left to mature for a minimum of three years. Sometimes, though, they can be left for as long as 50 years. After distillation, the whisky is actually a clear liquid, and it is in fact the casks that give each their own unique colour. A great place to learn about this process in the centre of the city is at the Holyrood Distillery. They run a 60 minute tour here that teaches you all about the process, tests your tasting skills, and gives you three samples to try. The city centre of Edinburgh has long been missing a distillery for single malt whisky, and Holyrood Distillery is the first in over a century. They also distill gin here too, and at the end of the tour, you can try either spirit. A bar to try some whiskey in the centre of Edinburgh is Chukters. The unique part about this pub is their Hoop of Destiny challenge. This is a game of hoopla where you get three attempts to land any whiskey on display for a set price. If you follow the Royal Mile all the way to the bottom, you will come to one of the entrances to Holyrood Park. This is a royal park that is open to the public and is an incredible 650 acres of land. It has locks, cliffs, ruins and plenty of grass so that when you are standing in the middle, although you are in the city centre, it feels like you are just in the Scottish Highlands. The park also hosts the largest of the seven hills that Edinburgh was founded on. Arthur's Seat sits at a height of 251 metres and is a popular spot to hike. There are three routes to get to the top. The easiest starts at Dunsapi Lock, which is already 110 metres above sea level. Another, the closest to the Royal Mile, is by the side of St Margaret's Lock at the flatter section of the park. And the final is a steep climb up a set of stone steps built into the side of the hill. Whichever route you choose will provide fantastic views over Edinburgh, and when you reach the top, you will have a phenomenal 360 degree view. While you're walking up the hill, you should know that you're actually walking up an extinct volcano that was last active over 300 million years ago. However, there is a legend that debates this, claiming that the hill is actually a sleeping dragon that lay down after too much terrorising of the city. One of the stranger moments in the history of the hill was when 17 miniature coffins were found on the side of the hill. Some say it was in connection to the famous Edinburgh serial killers Burke and Hare, 
who also killed 17 victims. But even to this day, nobody knows why they were there. And if you're a fan of hiking and climbing, you're in luck, as the world's largest indoor climbing arena is just minutes from Edinburgh. Edinburgh International Climbing Arena is, as it says in its name, a huge place to go and climb. Built in a disused quarry just outside the village of Ratho, it's home to a 30 metre tall climbing wall. They have 62 lead climbing lines for the more experienced climbers and 13 top rope lines for those just starting out. There are also rocks for bouldering in the centre of the arena. Just remember that even though these rocks are not as high, it doesn't make them any easier. Unlike the wall, there is no harness keeping you up if you slip. Since Ratho is outside of Edinburgh, it can be quite tricky to get to by bus. The easiest way is to take the 22 bus from the west end of Princess Street to the Gael Shopping Centre and change to a 20 from there. Once in Ratho, you will have to walk along the canal to reach the climbing arena. Buses in general in Edinburgh are great and very easy to get all over the city. The main bus company is Lothian Buses and you'll recognise them everywhere you go due to the fact that they have two floors. These double-decker buses have over 50 routes during the day and 17 during the night. Another place you may want to get a bus to in Edinburgh is the area of Morningside. Here you will find one of the best ice cream shops in Edinburgh. S. Luca first opened in the 1890s by an Italian who moved to Scotland. The first shop was in the seaside town of Musselburgh and eventually, due to its continued popularity, a second was opened in Morningside. The shop mixes the best parts of Italian and Scottish ice cream into a perfect blend of flavours. You'll find the classic flavours of ice cream as well as their own unique flavours such as toffee fudgy wudgy, Scottish tablet and a mixture of sorbets including an iron brew flavoured one. On the way back to the centre, you'll come to the start of a large green space. The majority of it is known as the meadows, but the first section you come to will be the adjoining Brunsfield links. On these links, you'll find one of Scotland's very few free public golf courses. In the past, the golf course was six holes long and played an important part in the development of golf in Scotland. However, when the area became more residential, in 1890, the short hole course was developed in order to make it safer. So really, it's actually just a pitch of putt course, but there's still 36 holes to play on it. And if you don't have a club, you can pop into the Golf Tavern pub to hire them. After the links, you'll find the main section of the meadows. The size of the open area makes it the perfect place to sit and have a beer while sizzling meat on a disposable barbecue. Close by to the meadows, just a stone's throw away, is an Asian takeaway that serves delicious noodle boxes. Red Box is a small self-service takeaway come restaurant where the idea is to select the ingredients personal to your taste buds and watch them be stir-fried fresh in front of your eyes, ready in an instant. There is plenty of seating inside if you feel like having a rest while having your meal. But if not, then they pack everything up for you to be able to enjoy on the go. They only accept cash though, so be prepared in advance before making your order. One of the great things about Edinburgh is that unlike many other cities, the museums here are generally free to enter. The National Museum of Scotland is just around the corner from the noodle bar, and a spot that shouldn't be missed due to its extensive galleries, rotating exhibitions, and the exquisite beauty of the Grand Gallery. The Grand Gallery is the section of the museum that you will first come to as you enter the main body of the museum. It is a stunning piece of architecture consisting of three floors of ascending pillars and you'll find displays throughout it spread across the different levels. There is a cafe here too where you can sit and enjoy a view of the atrium. Just beside the Grand Gallery is one of the museum's main attractions. Every hour the Millennium Clock swings into action and the clocks begin to turn. It has four main sections to it, showcasing the best and worst parts of the 20th century. And in the middle section you'll see figures of Hitler, Stalin, Lenin but also entertainment icons like Chapman. The Millennium Clock used to be displayed in the Grand Gallery, but was moved after the reconstruction. Despite its relocation, people still turn up in numbers to watch this four minute display of chimes while the pendulum slowly starts to swing. At either end of the Grand Gallery, you'll find two interesting but contrasting galleries. The first is home to the Animal Kingdom and has all sorts of giant displays of stuffed mammals to their real size and scale. You'll find skeletons of dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures too, none more daunting than the giant T-Rex that guards the entrance to the gallery. At the other end, you'll find the Science and Technology Gallery, 
which showcases a variety of different inventions that have changed the way that we live as humans. This gallery is very interactive. Why not test your reactions on the speed wall? Or see what it's like to drive a racing car? The area is also home to Dolly the Sheep, the world's first cloned mammal. Further into the museum, you'll find varying displays of artefacts from different cultures around the world. There is an entire section dedicated to Scottish history, and it can be a great place to learn about the nation's progression and inventions that helped, like the steam train and the loom. The museum also boasts a rooftop terrace where you can see some stunning views of the city. It provides a fantastic direct view of Edinburgh Castle for one. Scotland has a fierce and bloody history, and the centre pinnacle of it since the 12th century was Edinburgh Castle. Although battles occurred all over Scotland, the castle was constantly under attack. It was in a tug of war between England and Scotland, and that's because the power resided here. So whoever ruled the castle, ruled Scotland. The castle was built on top of Castle Rock, a volcanic slab that was spurt out from Arthur's seat 340 million years ago. The castle has always had a military presence, and since 1861, a cannon has been fired every day at 1pm, known as the one o'clock gun. This was originally started to allow ships a means of setting their clocks, but it's a tradition that has been maintained even to this day. It brings crowds of people daily to see the famous site. The castle is surrounded by the beautiful Princess Street Gardens. In the past, these gardens were known as the Nor Lock and had many other uses in addition to providing the castle with protection. These days, they are open for visiting and can be a serene space to soak up your surroundings while being in the heart of the city centre. Princess Street Gardens isn't the only gardens in Edinburgh that you should visit, and another is the Royal Botanic Gardens. The Botanics is a beautiful free public garden where you can go to relax in peaceful surroundings. Started in 1670 as a physic garden to grow plants for medicinal use, the garden was originally located by Holyrood Palace, but can now be found in the area of Inverleith. You'll find different plants here from all over the world, with more than 13,500 types spread out across 72 acres of land. A variety of trees, flowers, shrubs and more are delicately placed and cared for by a team of expert botanists. The gardens are very close by to a suburb of Edinburgh known as Stockbridge. Discover the Stockbridge market set here each Sunday where you can find handmade crafted goods and a wide range of foods from all over the globe. Or visit one of the most photographed streets in Edinburgh, Circus Lane, a cosy line of houses with pretty design and colourful fronts. The water of Leith also passes through Stockbridge. This is a river that spans 24 miles long, running down through the Pentland Hills, through the heart of Stockbridge and into the North Sea at Leith Stocks. There is a path that stretches almost 12 and a half miles and it is a great place to go for a walk or cycle. Following it from Stockbridge, you'll shortly come to the Dean Village. Dean Village was once a bustling village that made use of the natural spring that passes through it by being home to 11 water mills that assisted in the production of paper, fabric and flour for the city of Edinburgh. The workers at these mills stayed in the village, in an iconic Victorian building known as Well Court. It dates back to the 1880s and is still a living area for the residents of Edinburgh. All the buildings here have a very unique style, and even though this little piece of paradise is only moments from the hustle and bustle of Princes Street, it feels as if you are well out of the city. But coming back to the city, on a street parallel to Princes Street, there's a great place to grab a pizza cheaper than most, but better in quality. Dough Pizza follows a Neapolitan style and is one of the best pizzas this side of Naples. Cooked fresh in a wood fire oven, your pizza will be ready in minutes. Their extremely delicious taste comes from the ingredients that they use, which are all purchased from local suppliers. It's easy to miss the place tucked away on Rose Street, but once you discover it, it will be saved to your map for any time you're back in Edinburgh. Princes Street, Rose Street and George Street make up a rectangle of parallel streets in addition to Queen Street and is the main area of the new town. It's on Queen Street, however, that you'll find the hidden high-end cocktail bar that we'll visit next, Panda and Sons. The bar is themed to be a cross between a speakeasy and a barber shop and you can tell by the hidden entrance as you enter that they really tried to grab the concept of the prohibition period when alcohol was illicit. Their oldest cocktail, which has been with them since the first day, is the Birdcage, a whiskey based cocktail and it can be worth ordering simply for the way it is presented. At the other end of Queen Street is the Stand Comedy Club, 
Open seven nights a week, the venue can accommodate 150 people at full capacity, and acts of all types from all over the country come to gather here with the sole purpose of making your belly ache. Every Monday is Red Raw Night, a long-running open mic night for beginners to showcase their talent. You'll get 10 different acts here, so if someone doesn't take your fancy, it won't be long until the next act at least. For generations, a popular takeaway meal in Scotland is to get something from the local chip shop. Better known as chippies, few can resist the Saturday night temptation of mouth-watering fish and golden batter combined with a side of chunky chips covered in chippy sauce. Chippy green sauce is a condiment that is used on everything and rivals the traditional salt and vinegar. It's still pretty much unique to Edinburgh and is made on site, so there is much speculation as to what the recipe actually is. The number one spot to try one of these in Edinburgh is Café Picante on Broughton Street, which is just round the corner from the stand. Everything served here tastes phenomenal, and the vibe is highly contagious with the DJ playing at night. Chippies do everything deep fried in batter, from fish to pies to sausages and pizza. Some even do a cult classic to Scotland, the deep fried Mars bar. As it suggests in the name, this is an ordinary Mars bar that is deep fried in batter. The chocolate bar is typically chilled before battering to try to prevent it from melting. The dish originated as more of a novelty item, and funnily enough, Mars actually disapproves of it, as they say it does not promote the healthy lifestyle they try to commit to. Chippies are also popular in seaside resorts, and believe it or not, you're in luck, as Edinburgh has its own beach. That's right! Being a coastal city, Edinburgh is even home to a beach in the suburb of Portobello. Portobello was once the unopposed reigning king of the beaches amongst the people of Edinburgh and Glasgow due to the beginning of cheap public transport and a railway station opening in 1846. Eventually though, Portobello became part of Edinburgh in 1896 and its popularity decreased over the next century with the emergence of overseas travel. Despite this, the beach is still a frequented spot, especially in summer, and it is a popular spot for locals out on a stroll, with a 2.2 mile promenade stretching from one side to the other. Along the way you'll find numerous cafes serving food to outdoor seating areas, and even an amusement arcade with old penny slot machines. We hope you enjoyed your stay in Edinburgh. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel below for all the tips and tricks of many more hidden cities that we will explore.